All right. Hello, everyone. Again, you're Sheena Cobra Bradford bringing you another interview today from South Metro Democratic Women Council. And right now we're getting ready to interview Melanie Leffridge Harris. I hope I pronounced all of that correctly. I know how as women we get ready to get married, we hyphenate everything. <laughs> but I'm so excited to get ready to do this interview and I hope that you're excited as well. I am. I really am. All right, well, we're going to jump right into it, just in our 30-minute interview. So we know that you are in the runoff, and congratulations for being in the runoff. You are running as a candidate for judge, and I wrote this down, Superior Court of Atlanta Judicial Circuit. It's a mouthful, but I know you're getting ready to break it down to us. Tell us what is the roles and responsibilities. Sure. Thank you for the opportunity to interview. Let me say that. I really appreciate it. Nice to see you again in this yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fulton County Superior Court judges. What do they do? Right. Fulton County Superior Court judges, like all Superior Court judges, have what we call exclusive jurisdiction over certain kinds of cases, which means they're the only ones allowed to handle certain kinds of cases. And those cases are cases involving felony crimes. And felony crimes are crimes for which the sentence can be a year and above. It's 12 months and below as far as sentence, whether it be sentenced to probation or jail time. It's a year and above for felonies. Uh, Superior Court judges have exclusive jurisdiction over real estate matters. So when people have their houses foreclosed upon, things like that, those are real estate matters that only Superior Court judges can handle. Superior Court judges have exclusive jurisdiction. Again, that means they're the only body that can handle cases that are divorce cases and child custody cases. Okay. Um, and so those are those fall within what we call the exclusive jurisdiction of Superior Court judges. Also, and as an aside, Superior Court judges are also the only level of court that can handle what we call cases in equity. And what that means is if you're telling, you want the judge to tell someone to stop doing something, cease and desist, stop doing what you're doing. Or if you want to tell the judge, I want to make someone do something. That's called specific performance. That means that Superior Court judges are the only class of court that can tell a person you must do something. Or like I said, or you have to stop doing something. Okay. Superior court judges also handle cases that state court judges handle as well, like breach of contract cases, like cases involving what we call tort, which are your personal injury cases, like your car accidents and your, you want to sue your doctor as a medical malpractice. Those kinds of cases also superior court judges handle, Ms. Colbert Bradford, but they also share those cases with okay. superior court judges. Okay. And with all the responsibility, just like I asked your opponent, what does the budget look like? Do you know who sets the budget? How is the budget allocated for the judges? Why do we need so much for the budget? You know, just give us a little bit of the insight. Well, what I can tell you is that there are 20 superior court judges. There okay. are 10 state court judges. There is one probate court judge and there are nine full-time Fulton County magistrate court judges. Oh, wow. When we're looking at our courts, we're looking at it broadly as to all of the judges and the budget with respect to the, the, the judges is something that judges don't set. The Fulton County commissioners and their partners uh, allocate okay. monies that are coming to the court. So it's a it's a it's an other body that handles okay. budgets are for our court system. OK. So speaking of Fulton County Commissioner, you will be working with closely with the Fulton County Commissioner if elected. So just tell us some of the ways you would be able to collaborate with our new county commissioner. Well, they're right across the street. Um, the, the courthouse is at 185 Central Avenue and the commissioner's office is in what I call the Fulton County building. <laughs> street. You just There's a bridge that connects. You don't even have to go outside and get stormed on and just walk across the bridge. And um, I have a number of, of Fulton County commissioners that I have a relationship with that I speak to on a regular basis. And I intend to increase that relationship 
so that we have an open line of communication that's even better than what we have now. I think it's important for them to know some of the concerns that we have as judges uh, so that they can work with us to try to improve the whole court system for everybody that comes and uses it. Awesome. And you say concerns. Tell us a little bit about some of the concerns or issues you see with the judicial system and how do you see your platform helping that? All right. That's an excellent question. One of the concerns that I see very regularly in the docket that I sit in, because right now I'm sitting as a Fulton County Superior Court judge by designation, which means okay. their permission and authority. And I've been doing that full time for mm -hmm. the last five years. Five. And one of the things that I've seen in that in, in this particular role is that we have people coming to court who do not qualify for the resources of the public defender because they make too much money, but they don't make enough money to hire a private attorney. Mm -hmm. So they fall within this gap, you know, this very significant gap where they are, are, are conceivably going to move forward unrepresented. And that mm -hmm. is a huge concern for me um, because everybody, I believe needs to be entitled to a lawyer. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what, right. Everybody's entitled to, to, to representation. And so, yes. So I don't know if that means that the, the necessary material partners with respect to the public defender's office, see what they can do to raise the ceiling on those people that, you know what I mean? That can fall within their, their, um, their purview or if that means that we need to get more engaged with Atlanta Volunteer Lawyers Foundation and other nonprofit um, legal aid foundations to fill in the gaps. Okay. That is something that's very significant that I think is definitely um, something that uh, we need to take care of in the way of access. And I am happy to and will participate in any conversations that would be appropriate for me to have, given my role as judge, uh, to move the needle forward on that. All right. And what what is your platform? What what do you, what does Judge Melanie Harris stand for? What what is your platform? Excellent question. When you come to my courtroom, if you mm -hmm. have to come to my courtroom, Ms. Colbert Bradford, you're going to be able to know a lot of things. First of all, you're going to be treated with respect. All right. Um, the second thing is you're going to know that not only am I going to follow the law, but I'm going to use my wide amount of judicial discretion mm -hmm. in a way that is fair, just, and reasonable, in a way that makes sense, in a way that does not leave principles of common sense on the side of the road. Okay. And so it, I guess what I'm saying is that I'm a citizen as well, right? Mm -hmm. The kind of judge that I am and the kind of judge that I will be as our next Fulton County Superior Court judge is the kind of judge that as a citizen, I would expect to see on the bench. And I, and I will continue to treat people in the way that I have in that, with that in mind. Okay. So, yep. Thank you. And yes. what is your take as far as what resources does the judicial system have that we might necessarily not know of that we can utilize or is not being used right now? Well, we have a lot of accountability courts. And these, these are oh, wow. that we as judges use mm -hmm. in um, deciding what is best for people who come in front of us. We all know um, that a, a root or the roots of a lot of our criminal activity lie in homelessness, mental mm -hmm. health issues, and substance abuse issues. So as okay. it's because we have so many accountability courts available to us in Fulton County, we are able to use those courts in cases where it's appropriate to use them and send folks to those varying courts. So there's also a, D, there's a DUI court, there's a veterans court, uh, there's mm -hmm. courts, there's okay. a mental health court. So you see what I'm saying? So those mm -hmm. are cases that we use routinely as judges in meeting out sentences for people because sometimes folks just need a little help to get over mm -hmm. and get back, you know, get back on track. 
Okay. Personally speaking, uh-huh. there, are, there are some programs that I would like to put in place. Okay. A County Superior Court judge to help some of the um, upward trajectory that I see going on with criminal activity. And there's a very specific mentorship program that I want to put in place that I've discussed in other um, interviews that involves stopping children from even having to come to the Superior Court because we want to take care of them at the time that they're having their misdemeanor hiccup level criminal right. activity and expose them to what it looks like if they have to come to Superior Court so mm-hmm. that we can stop them from even coming. So I have that program. Oh, wow. Yeah. Any other programs that you have plans for? I'm thinking about one that I'd like to do that involved that directly related to the COVID pandemic. And it is also mm-hmm. for youth offenders. Um, okay. What we're seeing, what I believe we will see is a, because we have older people who are passing, everybody, a lot of people are passing from the passing. Country. They yeah. all kind of know somebody. So it is broadening quite a bit. But the most vulnerable population seems to still be people who are senior citizens. And as mm-hmm. you know, in our communities, it is the grandmother or the grandfather that is usually or sometimes the backbone of the family. And so when you're experiencing the loss of a grandparent for any reason, but more particularly because of the COVID pandemic, I think we might see an uptick in criminal activity from younger people. Mm-hmm. I have some thoughts in mind about how to structure a program that might be directly related to young folks who are causing crimes as a result of a lack of family structure as a result of the pandemic. Ah, yeah. Interesting. Didn't even think of it from that perspective. So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Now, working with, do you work closely with the DA's office? Uh, any of the issues that we may have with the police department, that's been a really big issue that we've been having, defunding the police. What are your thoughts about the things that are going on right now? Even though it may not be your, quote unquote, if it's not your direct responsibility, those are the collaborations we're looking for, for new candidates to come in and collaborate to start working to help with more solutions. That's a great question. Well, in my job working as a Fulton County Superior Court judge um, by sitting by designation mm-hmm. of the uh, public defender's office to come through as well as the prosecutors from the DA's office. So they are routinely, mm-hmm. both groups are routinely before me every day uh, wow. for the last five years they have. So I've had a f- sort of a front row seat in a lot of the issues that we're seeing um, criminally that come okay. before the court. And my thought process is that the conversation needs to continue. The conversation is getting louder and louder and louder. That's a good thing. People are having quiet conversations in the corner, corner, in the corner pockets as well about all the unrest and what we need to do to make sure we get all of this, um, all of our systematic issues under control. And I'm happy to see these things happening uh, because that is what we need. Um, I am the arbiter as a judge of credibility in Mm -hmm. every single day, which means I sit and, and figure out based on the evidence presented to me, what I believe is the truth and what I believe is not the truth uh, given to me from the witness stand. That is something that is that is to be leveled all the way across. It doesn't matter who you are in the witness stand, what you do in the witness stand for a living. If you were in the witness stand and you took an oath to tell the truth, I'm going to be investigating when I listen to you, when I watch your facial tics, when I see your body movement, when I think about what makes good common sense as far as the scenario that's being told to me, whether or not you are telling me the truth or not. And I'm gonna continue to do that as our next Fulton County Superior Court judge. I'm I'm an arbiter of the truth. 
Yeah. Thank you. And knowing that you do work with jurors sometimes, tell the citizens how important it is to be a juror and what I know nobody wants to get the letter in the mail, <laughs> but how important that is. This is a great question because you're right. Um, and as a Fulton County Superior Court judge sitting by designation, I have tried a number of cases, right? And so I see the grumbled faces when they come in. And you know what? I sat as a juror once, didn't think I was going to get picked, said pick. Um, but I was excited to do it. And let me, let me tell you what I tell the jurors when they come in. I said, look, I know that there are other places that you would rather be today. I know that you got the note in the mail. You're going to get your compensation of what, $25. You're going to think this is not even going to pay for, you know, for lunch. But, but this is what I want you to think of. If it were you or a family member of yours that was involved in this case, either as a victim or a defendant, either as a civil plaintiff, or a civil defendant, wouldn't you want you to be sitting in judgment on the case or someone who thinks like you? And the head's nodding and, and so we sort of get past the, um, the disgruntled feeling of having to be there. Jury duty is significant, particularly in times like we have now. Um, representation across the board of our citizenship in the box of 12 is critical to having fairness with respect to what the decisions are. And if we bail out of jury duty, which is not legal by the way, <laughs> then, um, then we're doing the whole community a disservice. So you got jury duty, go get it. Yes, yes, and I agree. And moving into, we're getting ready to start wrapping up, but why should we vote for you? What makes you a better candidate besides the opponent who you're running against? Ms. Colbert Bradford, thank you for asking me that question. I have been serving our communities in one way or another in this legal field for 29 years. Okay, so that's a long time. And during that time period, I've spent the last 13 years as a Fulton County Magistrate Court Judge and have been proud to serve in that way. The last 10 of those years, I've been sitting full time as a Fulton County Magistrate Court Judge. And the last five of those years, I've been sitting as a Superior Court Judge, sitting by designation, doing a large part of what they do, both civilly and mostly criminally in that particular space. <laughs> I've also sat as a State Court Judge, sitting by designation. So I've had honor and privilege of sitting on behalf of our state court judges as well, trying jury trials for both the Superior Court and the state court, criminal pleas, suppression hearings, extradition hearings. I bring a lot of judicial experience to the bench because I've been doing it for so long. Prior to becoming a full-time judge in 2010, I spent 19 years in the practice of law. So I've been in the trenches I know what it's like to be a lawyer. I know what it's like to, to try a case. And I've tried over 65 jury trials as a lawyer, and that's a lot as sole counsel. I've also worked as a staff attorney on the Superior Court judge, the very, the very court that I seek. I've worked as a staff attorney for a judge. Mm -hmm. That's how I started my career on this court and also the Georgia Court of Appeals. I went to Spelman College back in the 80s, I'm showing my age, and went to Georgetown Law School. And significantly, my desire to become a judge started when I was a third year law school student. Mm -hmm. It happened then where I was representing a young woman who was the victim of domestic abuse. We went to court, her face was all bludgeoned, bludgeoned up. We stood before the judge trying to get a temporary restraining order. And, and Ms. Colbert Bradford, the judge began to scream at her. He berated her, he blamed her for the attack she survived. And we watched him mistreat everybody in the courtroom. And I said to myself, this is not the way people deserve to be treated. 
going down the court on what is usually one of the worst days of their lives. And I said, I want to be a judge. And I want to make sure that when people come to court, that they feel respected when they come to court, that they know that, that I'm a judge that will hear them all the way out, all sides to a case. That I'll let their family members speak as well. And I'll take all of those things into consideration when applying the law to their case and deciding what makes the most sense. I am a Fulton County homeowner. I've lived here for over 25 years. I am deeply invested in our communities. And I think that's important as a judge. Uh, I'm a citizen too. Um, and I want people on the bench that show me that they have good common sense and will treat me fairly if I'm ever, ever before, before the court. I think it's also important for you to know that I'm out in the community working as a judge, all right? And in the courthouse working, I am the judge that the sheriff's department, their youth intervention program, I'm the judge that routinely sees the children that come to court uh, before they make their next stop is the jail. And I get off the bench and I talk with the children about their choices and how to make better ones so that they don't find themselves really and truly in court. I go and make routine uh, presentations at Douglas and Mays High Schools, which are in, the, which are in my backyard. I live right inside 285 on the south side of town. And we've talked to children about knowing their rights. We've talked to them about uh, cyber bullying. We've talked about teen suicide. We've talked to AUC students about uh, human trafficking and domestic violence. Um, I believe it's important to get out in the community and demystify for, for our young people, you know, what it is to be a judge and that judges are a part of the community and have, have interest. Uh, lately, I've been going to the, the uh, city of South Fulton food distribution drives that uh, 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 council member Helen Willis has sponsored and participated in um, filling up cars with the food that's been brought um, in, you know, for people who are suffering from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I, I say all this to say that I'm a judge who cares. I'm out in the community doing the work. Um, and lastly, I'll say that I am on the board of directors of Covenant Community Incorporated, which is a residential life stabilization program for men experiencing homelessness and substance abuse issues. Uh, it is a ministry of All Saints Episcopal Church. And that is near and dear to my heart because I do know, like I said earlier, that the root of a lot, a lot of our criminal activity is based in those three things, mental health issues, substance abuse issues, and homelessness. So I'm not just talking the talk, I'm walking the walk. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And thank you. And that's going to conclude everything. And congratulations on getting into the runoff. Uh, we applaud you. We know the numbers. We pray that we have another record like we did back in June 9th. Yes. Uh, and I wish you all the best. Is there a website? People, can people still get signs? You know, what do you need from the citizens to help? Thank you. Yes, the website, please, is Melanie Leftridge. Harris.com. We would love it if you would sign up to volunteer uh, with our campaign. Thank you for the opportunity, Ms. Colbert Bradford, to shout that out. Uh, we are still in need of, of help. We still have two weeks and several days to go. Early voting started July 20th. It is ending August 7th. Election day is August 11th. I got this little handy dandy sheet. I think you all got it in the mail as well. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. There are 20 open polling sites for early vote. Um, so there's no reason why we can't all uh, get out the vote and get it out early. So so please, you know, um, exercise your right to vote. A lot of people die for that right. So let's yes. let's let's do this. All right. Thank all you, right. everybody. Thank you, Ms. Colbert Bradford. You're welcome. And thank you again. Thank you for taking the time to interview with us. And again, everyone, please take advantage of early voting. It's definitely needed. Have a great afternoon. You too. You too. Bye-bye.